All right, let's see how Ekman transport influences the circulation of the ocean. If we go back to our uh, an image that depicts the major wind patterns, you remember we talked about the trade winds going from northeast to southwest or from southeast to northwest in the southern hemisphere. And we also talked about the westerlies in their general westerly direction. If we add an arrow for Ekman transport on that, here's what we find. That water is getting pushed towards the centers of the ocean. So the westerly flows are pushing water in this direction. The trade winds moving from east to west are moving water in this direction and water is piling up, so to speak, in the middle of the oceans. In doing so, this piling up of water creates a kind of tug of war, if you want to think about it that way. Ekman transport is pushing water up in this direction. The fact that water is getting pushed up is creating a higher pressure here. Remember, pressure goes downhill. It goes from high pressure to low pressure. So there's a hydrostatic or horizontal pressure gradient that's trying to move the water in this direction. And it was, as a result of all of this, we have formation of what are called geostrophic currents. Geostrophic means earth turning. And so as a result, because of this central gyre directed Ekman transport and the balance between that and the horizontal pressure gradient, what we get is the circulation of ocean currents around the gyres. We get this clockwise circulation in the northern hemisphere, counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Now, I don't expect you to understand the details of geostrophic circulation and geostrophic flow. I do expect you to understand that it is Ekman transport directed 90 degrees to the direction of the winds that's causing this kind of gyre circulation that we're seeing. And that you might even be able to express that this balance, this geostrophic balance from inwardly directed Ekman transport and a higher horizontal pressure gradient is what's causing the currents to go around in circles as we see them. In fact, we have observational evidence for that as well. If we look at a map of sea surface heights, we see bumps in the central gyres of the ocean. Now, of course, this isn't in the exact middle, and the fact that it's displaced, this is called western displacement or hill offset, uh, not anything we need to cover in here, but the fact is we see bumps in the middle of the ocean, and it's due, again, to geostrophic balance and geostrophic equilibrium. So, again, I'm not going to ask you about the details of that because it's fairly complex, but just so you have some appreciation that Ekman transport is really behind the surface circulation of the world ocean and we can actually model the circulation, the surface circulation of the world ocean using things that we know about Ekman transport. So it's a big word in physical oceanography, Ekman transport. It's sort of like physical oceanography 101. You learn about Ekman transport and you just kind of know what that is. Okay. I'm not going to talk much about this, but I just showed you a, a picture of sea surface height and this is just a Topex Poseidon, uh, now Jason satellite that's measuring this height of the sea surface. And in doing so, and this is kind of, you can see, we're talking about centimeters here. But in fact, the ocean does change. You could actually walk up the hill of the ocean and down the hill, albeit maybe a whole elevation of a meter or so. But we have satellites that can detect this now. And by measuring essentially through a radar, something called satellite altimetry, by measuring the height of the ocean relative to some zero surface, it helps give us information about El Ninos and La Ninas. It also helps us understand something about circulation of the ocean as well. So when you talk about and see some of the El Nino maps, you're seeing those maps as generated by now the Jason satellite. Of course, there's all kinds of other things. We talked a little bit about satellite altimetry in chapter four when we talked about seafloor bathymetry. So there's lots of applications of this, and this is just a review of that technology.